Welcome to the third virtual fam of TTG Aussie Fest. During this session, we're going to be hearing from Annabelle at the Cultural Attractions of Australia, as well as a couple of her attraction partners. We're going to get unique insight into what it's like to visit the Queensland Art Gallery and Gallery of Art, as well as the National Museum of Australia, so you can get to know these destinations better and answer any questions your clients might have about them. Please don't forget to answer any questions in the polls tab to the right hand side of your screen for the chance to win Qantas flights to Australia and Aussie barbecue party packs from Gold Medal. And remember, you can increase your chances of winning a prize by snapping a selfie in the photo booth that you can find in the virtual lobby. So without further ado, over to Annabelle. Hello, my name is Annabelle Sullivan. I'm the Executive Officer for Cultural Attractions of Australia. We are an industry-led collective representing 18 of Australia's cultural tourism offerings across visual and performing arts, sport and cultural heritage. We are a part of Tourism Australia's Signature Experiences Program, and we're thrilled to also be a part of this TTG Aussie Fest event. Let me start by giving you a quick introduction to Cultural Attractions of Australia, and I look forward to catching up with you in the Q&A session at the end. We have 18 members in regional and city locations across Australia. Our members are all names that you would be familiar with, from the Adelaide Oval and the MCG, to the National Gallery of Victoria, Port Arthur in Tasmania, the Australian War Memorial in Canberra, and the Sydney Opera House, just to name a few. All our members offer bookable and commissionable VIP and behind the scenes experiences ensuring unrivaled access for your clients. Exceptional guides and curators share their stories to bring these attractions to life and to make them truly inspiring and memorable once in a lifetime experiences. Australia has such a wealth of culture to share and Cultural Attractions of Australia provides a way for your high value clients to experience them. Today, I'm going to introduce you to a couple of our members and give you just a taste of the incredible experiences and the people behind these attractions. You will hear about an exclusive evening immersed in Queensland's unique Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island art and culture, available at the Queensland Art Gallery, Gallery of Modern Art in Brisbane. And then we'll travel to Canberra, where I catch up with a chat with Craig Middleton, a senior curator from the National Museum of Australia. It's my pleasure to now introduce you to Chris Sainz. Hello, I'm Chris Sainz, Director of Quagoma, the Queensland Art Gallery and Gallery of Modern Art. It's my great pleasure to speak to you from one of Australia's most visited, ambitious and welcoming art museums. I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which the gallery stands in Brisbane, Queensland. We pay respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander elders and acknowledge the immense creative contribution First Australians make to the cultural life of this country. Quagoma is part of the Queensland Cultural Centre here in Brisbane, a short walk from the city and adjacent to South Bank. We have two architecturally acclaimed buildings the award-winning Modernist Queensland Art Gallery and the dramatic and contemporary Gallery of Modern Art. Both galleries show visitors the world through artists' eyes and immerse them in a vast array of inspiring works of art. Quagoma is renowned for its commitment to the contemporary art of Australia, Asia and the Pacific. And right now, I'm speaking from our flagship exhibition, the Asia Pacific Triennial of Contemporary Art the 10th in the series. The impressive installation behind me is a collaborative work by First Nations artists Grace Lillian Lee and Ken Fide Senior from far north Queensland. Quagoma welcomes visitors of every age and ability through our doors, and we want them to feel that our gallery is for them. We see ourselves as an extension of Brisbane's warm, relaxed and open lifestyle and atmosphere. Central to our work, is the recognition of the importance of Australian First Nations artists to this country's culture. There are always displays of contemporary Indigenous Australian art at Quagoma, and we want visitors to hear directly from First Nations people to discover their extraordinary stories of history and culture and of this place. 
Our strong commitment to cultural tourism at Kwagoma has led us to join Cultural Attractions of Australia. They represent some of Australia's most iconic arts attractions, a like-minded, industry-led collective that promotes our immersive tours and signature events to the travel industry. For Cultural Attractions of Australia, we partnered with 100% Indigenous-owned Brisbane business, Blacklash Creative. Together, we've developed exclusive experiences that immerse you in the unique art and culture of Queensland's Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, right here at the gallery. These commissionable experiences are ideal for high value travellers and corporate clients who want something special. Our signature experience, for example, is an opportunity to make authentic connections with First Nations art, artists and more. So, here to tell you more about the experience itself is Troy Casey, co-director of Blacklash Creative. Hello, I'm Troy Casey, co-director of Blacklash Creative. It's great to be talking to you from Quagoma today, here on the traditional lands of the Yugger and Turrbal peoples. As Chris mentioned, our two organisations have gotten together to create a unique evening experience that celebrates and connects guests with First Nations art, music, native food, dance, culture and storytelling. This premium experience ensures guests enjoy a night like no other. It's an intimate experience, available for a minimum of 10 guests and we suggest a maximum of 25. For the whole evening, the gallery is exclusively theirs. Let me talk you through what's included. We start off with a beautiful welcome to country and smoking ceremony. Why do we do this? A welcome to country is an important ritual that officially welcomes people to the land of the traditional custodians of that area. The purpose is not only to make visitors feel safe, but to instill in them a feeling for the land and a connection to that country. We then move inside for a private tour of magnificent First Nations artworks on display here at the gallery. We're joined on the tour by one of Quagoma's Indigenous art curators, as well as a First Nations storyteller and an artist. So we can dive deeper into the stories behind the artworks and what propels the artist's creations. Following the tour, guests enjoy an unforgettable dinner. This is a delicious and indulgent experience where art meets food. Indigenous chef Chris Jordan from Three Little Birds works in collaboration with Quagoma's executive chef, Doug Innes Wills. Chris focuses his work on native Australian ingredients. His love and respect for the earth spreads a message of positivity and conservation of ancient knowledge. Both chefs are passionate advocates for native Australian ingredients. And during our first artist events, they take the time to come out of the kitchen and share details of the dishes being enjoyed. The inspired menu is both delicious and breathtaking to see on the plate. And while it changes season to season, Here's a little idea of what your guests might be enjoying. Local reef fish nummus with finger lime and curry myrtle coconut sorbet. Emu tartare with anise myrtle and mountain pepper cured crocodile lardo. Murray cod and warrigal green congee furikake of coastal greens. Burnt barbed wire grass and emu egg custard with a native raspberry ochre. Wattle seed cannelaise and rosella jam. My mouth is watering just thinking about it. Our First Nations storytellers, artist and curator dines with the guests, continuing the conversations about art and culture throughout the evening. And the immersive experiences don't stop there. We also include live music and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander dance performances. The evening leaves guests feeling enriched and awakened through these memorable connections. Craig Middleton is one of Tourism Australia's storytellers and we know that it is the people and the stories that really bring a museum or a gallery to life. So we thought we'd take this opportunity just to ask Craig a few burning questions to find out a little bit more about the National Museum of Australia, his role and also a few things about big histories. So Craig, do you want to start with telling us a little bit about the National Museum of Australia? 
Absolutely, and thank you so much for, for having me here. Uh, the National Museum of Australia, as its name suggests, is the National Museum of Australia. It's an institution that is responsible for sharing the stories of what is a really complex nation and a complex continent, that is Australia, from First Nations histories to a human interaction with the environment, so our environmental histories, and through to more recent histories, histories since 1788, and that is since the colonisation of Australia. And it's our responsibility uh, here in Canberra, Australia's national capital, uh, to engage uh, with Australians and people from all over the world and share Australian history, culture and identity. Excellent. And what do you see as the role of museums in 2022? That's a great question. That's a really big question, of course. Uh, you know, museums have always had an important role in collecting, preserving, interpreting and sharing objects, people and stories of human history. And while this role of a museum remains crucial, there, in 2022 and, and probably for the last few decades, there's an enhanced responsibility for museums uh, to be socially engaged to connect with communities to do that work. And of course, being socially engaged can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And it really does depend, you know, where a museum is located and who that, that museum intends to serve. So for the National Museum of Australia, for example, um, as its name suggests, we are a museum uh, about of by and for Australians. So, so it is our responsibility to connect with that audience. And in the context of a global pandemic and a range of other crises that continue to uh, permeate through our, our nation, including natural disasters and social issues, our responsibility does lie in ensuring that we connect with communities and individuals across our country in order to do that collecting, that preserving, that interpreting, and to share more complex and more diverse collections and stories of by and for this nation. Uh, and I guess the last thing I want to say on that is that history is not just something that exists, but it's something that informs us and the paths we take in life. So this role of a museum in 2022 is not, a, is not a, only about the past, it's also about our future. Wow, that's a pretty big um, brief, as you said. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And Craig, your role as a senior cur curator, can you just tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. And I think the term curator is also one of those terms that that is really context specific. If you're a curator, you know, context is everything. Um, but it depends how large or small your organisation is and, and the specific direction of your organisation. So a curator at the National Museum of Australia, it's my role to acquire care for and develop the National Historical Collection. And, and that is to undertake the identification of potential objects of significance, and then to work through the process of, of researching uh, and, and then acquiring those objects, um, you know, physically into the collection. Curators at the National Museum lead content development. So we're responsible for developing the conceptual frameworks through which our objects are displayed and through which our stories are told. So here I'm talking about exhibitions programs and online presentations that engage audiences with, with Australian history. And so we're also responsible for the research and writing of those, of those stories. Um, and I think, you know, just a big role generally for curators is to promote the significance of history to a wide range of audiences and communities. And I think I've already expressed this, but, but we do this in collaboration with the individuals, groups and communities whose collections we are custodians of and whose collections we care for. Okay. National Traveller coming to uh, the National Museum of Australia. Um, what do you think would actually draw them and what would be of interest to them? What should they go and see? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It's an it's a, uh, interesting question because, of course, I have my own preferences uh, in terms of what I find interesting. Um, and I think I, I mentioned already that, you know, visitors from all walks of life will come with their own identity, their personality, which is shaped by their interests and experiences. And so, you know, in that regard, I actually think the National Museum can offer uh, something of interest uh, to, to any visitor from all over the world, because it might be 
uh, the shimmer of an object that captures your attention or a photo of a group of people that that makes you want to ask more questions. It might be the colours of your favourite sport te sports team within a display that might grab your attention or, or just simply a love of stories. Um, and I don't know about you, but when I visit a country uh, that, I, that I wasn't raised in or born in, you know, and I'm leaving the airport and arriving in a city, you know, I want to know more about that place, the architecture, the people, the customs and the practices that I'm witnessing on my way to my hotel. And I think you can get a better understanding of, of that about Australia from the National Museum of Australia, from the Gallery of First Australians, which is our largest gallery that explores uh, the many histories of many diverse First Nations communities, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities across this vast continent. And specifically, I think international uh, tourists and visitors will be interested in within that gallery, our Talking Black to History exhibition, which, which is quite a recent exhibition that was opened in 2020 uh, and presents Australian history from the perspective of First Nations communities. So what it's doing, it's really challenging a commonly known narrative about Australian history and presenting those different perspectives so we can think about, you know, think about that history and those objects and those stories in a different light. Uh, equally, our Landmarks Gallery um, explores history from 1788 when the first ships arrived, um, colonial ships arrived. Uh, in 1788 to settle on this continent on the east coast of Australia. Um, it explores the impact of colonisation on First Nations people and, and how this nation has not evolved over time from small settlements to a, a significant economy on the global stage and how it's managed to move through pandemics, world wars and everything in between. Uh, it's a, it, There's just so many stories that I think would would not only interest international visitors, but give those people a better sense of the place they're visiting and what they're experiencing. And I think, you know, you as as visitors move through other experiences on their their travels and their journeys, they'll they'll make connections with what they see in the museum, and and you know those light bulb moments where you're like, oh, that's interesting because that connects to here, which connects to that, and I saw that in the museum. So you know, it's a it's a it's a really beautiful beautiful museum with lots of stories to share. Wow, that's a fantastic answer. And there's just, um, you know, as you say, travellers really want to understand a destination and it's a great way to be able to do that. Um, as part of the Cultural Attractions of Australia Collective, you have an experience called Big Histories. Can you just tell us a little bit about that experience? Absolutely. It's a great, it's a great experience. So the Big Histories experience is, is very much an exclusive experience. It's an exclusive opportunity to hear about the big stories that the museum shares and the big objects. And so I say that, but I don't, I don't uh, exclusively mean like physically big objects. So while the while the the experience might take you to some of those physically big objects, we're talking about stories that have had a big impact on Australia and its history too. Um, so participants in what is a tour will be led by one of our many amazing curators, and that is a very special thing to happen. We have a have a whole separate team who manages public tours. So by signing up to the Big Histories tour, you're actually getting exclusive access to a curator with a deep knowledge of the collection and their own personal interests and expertise in Australian history more generally and that means that no one tour is the same and and it can be led not only by the interests of the curator but the interests of the participant and so on these big history tours we will of course take you through all the amazing stories but if there's something that that you're interested in we'll take you there and we'll engage it gauge with it you know, on the spot with you and explore why that moment that story that object is significant to Australian history I might give you an example of one of our big histories, if that's okay. So, so often a, a key sort of staple of these tours is the Holden prototype number one, which is uh, a vehicle that was produced in 1946 and then secretly shipped from the General Motors Holden factory in Detroit, Michigan, to be tested 
uh, in Australian conditions before the public release of the first Holden car, the all Australian car in 1948. And actually legend has it that this, these prototype along with two other prototypes were driven under the cover of darkness from the airport to the Fisherman's Bend factory in Melbourne so no one would see them. Um, this car, this prototype car, is not just a story of manufacturing and it's not just a story of a, of a movement of a car from Detroit to Australia, but it's really about Australian identity. Still, Australians today might identify as a Holden or Ford driver and the Australian um, car for Australians conditions um, promoted our nation as a growing economy in the 20th century on the world stage and really you know, established us as a, as a global player. And you can see how, you know, the symbolism of having a national car and a national car manufacturing company could do that. And, you know, not least of all, it's a very beautiful blue and it's a very stunning, stunning car with all the chrome you might expect from the 1940s. Um, but it's stories like this that have a big impact on Australian history. It defines our culture and identity. And, and these are the kinds of stories that participants can expect to encounter on their tour. And following the tour, the exclusive tour, uh, tour participants get to retire to our beautiful waterfront cafe, enjoy an Australian grazing platter and a local Canberra beer or wine while enjoying the incredible views of, of Lake Burley Griffin, which is this amazing body of water that surrounds our museum uh, in what is known as the bush capital. So a very beautiful, beautiful spot to, to reflect on, on what you might have seen on the tour. Wow, that's fantastic. And all of those elements have a story in their, on their own, don't they? <laughs> Absolutely. Great. Stories proliferate everything about the National Museum of Australia. <laughs> Greg, thank you so much for sharing your story and uh, the story behind Big Histories and also obviously the incredible stories that lay within the National Museum of Australia. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you for joining our live Q&A. Um, I'm Maddie Barber, as you know, and I am joined by Annabelle, who you've just watched her virtual fam. And also we've got Bronwyn here from the Queensland Art Gallery to answer all your questions. So if you do have any questions, please do pop them in the chat box. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with the format by now and know what to do. I'm just gonna check that we are live. Yes, we are, fantastic. Okay, so we actually have had one question come in already and that is from Keith. He was asking about the National Museum, Annabelle, and whether that's open seven days a week. Yes, it is absolutely open seven days a week. And uh, most of the attractions around Australia are currently open seven days a week. Okay, great. Do you know, do you know um, oh, I guess it varies, isn't it? But what about timings during the day? Like what times open in the morning and close in the evening? Um, usually about 10 to 5, but Bronwyn, you might want to talk specifically about GOMA. Yeah, at the Queensland Art Gallery and Gallery of Modern Art, we're open from 10 to 5 daily. We're only closed on Good Friday, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, and we open from 12 noon on Anzac Day. Other than that, we're open all the time, 10 to 5. Fantastic. And obviously for our events in the evenings, um, open for those too. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, we've also had a question from Lisa Marie, who is asking, can we send our clients to any certain place where they can experience making their own First Nation arts? So Annabelle, that's one view. Is there any kind of hands-on experiences in your collection? And I'm actually going to handball that one to Bronwyn because okay. the First Nations experience that they have at the gallery um, does that. Go for it, yeah, Bronwyn, so you can that. Yes, um, in our first artist experience, um, and we've just um, developed a whole new package that I've just sent to Annabelle recently, um, that does involve a workshop session. So it could be anything from um, I don't know, weaving to sketching, etc. Um, so there is a kind of workshop activity involved in our kind of experience for groups that we have in the evenings. Um, so that's a kind of separate experience to kind of our everyday kind of experience here at the gallery, though. Okay, cool. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, it does. Thank you. Um, we've had another one from May asking about ticketing. Um, and would people need to buy individual tickets for each museum or gallery? Or is there a pass that they can use to visit a number of the different cultural attractions of Australia? Annabelle? 
Um, with most of the galleries, depending on what's going on there, there's uh, free entry. But if they do have a paid exhibition, they need to actually pay for that. And I am not aware of a pass that you can get um, around Australia, which is different, I know, to other places um, in the world, but a great idea. Yeah, <laughs> great idea, yeah. And Bronwyn, Thank you. <laughs> Bronwyn, what about ticketing um, at Queensland Art Gallery? Is, is it free to enter? Or yes, absolutely free to enter, except for perhaps um, some special um, exhibitions that we might hold during our winter or summer season. Um, but for our cultural attractions of Australia packages, if we're exploring the art in those exhibitions, um, there's no additional cost for the exhibition experience itself. Okay, great. We've got another question for you here, Bronwyn. Um, Elaine is asking about the behind the scenes tour. Is it bookable yes. for individuals or is it for groups? So at the moment we have two packages. Um, the first is our kind of um, exceptional art and dining package and it's for um, groups between um, kind of 10 to 25. It's quite intimate so you can have that really one-to-one -one, um, kind of experience with an artist, a curator, etc. And then our other package at the moment is also uh, for groups um, for 30 to 50 and that's kind of having that workshop experience. So for us at the moment we don't have an individual um, kind of in Indigenous tour experience at the moment at the gallery. Um, but Annabelle, there might be other cultural attractions of Australia that do offer those experiences. Uh, yeah, there's definitely um, an Indigenous experience, tour experience available at a number of our other attractions. And that's actually just some information that we're collating at the moment. So I can um, share that with you once we've actually got the information available and that will also be available on our website as well. Okay, brilliant, thanks. Um, we've got Tracy here asking about an Aboriginal smoking ceremony. Mm -hmm. You're both nodding. And Annabelle, did you wanna talk a bit about that um, and what where clients can experience that kind of thing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it's really something that can be done um, in conjunction with uh, any of the attractions, but it's usually done um, probably aligning with Discover Aboriginal Experiences mm -hmm. and getting, um, them to actually coordinate and organise it. But having said that, again, I'll just um, hand over to Bronwyn yeah. and she can respond specifically to the gallery. Yeah, yeah. And for our cultural attractions of Australia experiences, that kind of welcome to country includes that. So the welcome to country is very much about including um, the kind of smoking ceremony with the gumleys to kind of um, cleanse the air. Um, our um, participants then kind of walk through that smoke to cleanse themselves. And then also as part of the welcome to country, um, uh, the um, Indigenous representative will talk about what welcome to country means but also um for ours it also includes a didgeridoo performance you know connecting to those ancient sounds of aboriginal culture as well so um i think i love that tracy asked that question because it is such a, a beautiful and important part of commencing an indigenous experience it's really beautiful yeah lovely thank you i can see frank you've popped a question in there about flights um i don't think annabelle and bronwyn will We'll have any insight into that but um so i would suggest asking oh, Qantas in their partner room for that one um unless they're in the room now and can answer in the chat suzanne is also asking about cost um how much do these experiences cost and, and are they bookable in the uk um so bronwyn did you want to talk about a bit about cost and the experiences that you've talked about today I can talk about those and also maybe then Annabelle you might want to talk about the other cultural um, experiences as well that we offer um, and, they're, and they're bookable um, and where they can be booked in the UK rather. So for our experiences, our dining experience is a premium, premium experience. Um, you have the entire gallery to yourselves for the night and it's a very intimate experience. So that um, cost is just over four thousand dollars per person for the very bespoke unique premium experience it's also where we have our chefs coming out we're creating bespoke um, um menus for you etc there's dancers it's um it's an incredible night um with a few surprises and delights um to um in kind of enhance that experience and our other kind of group cost is around the um five hundred dollar mark um, which is for groups of 30 to 50. And I think because it, they both include 
the Welcome to Country ceremony. They both include um, the connection to um, artists and workshops. So there's a lot of um, Indigenous stakeholders that are involved um, in our packages as well. Um, but they are kind of premium ex experiences where you have the entire gallery to yourselves for the evening and you are very much um, developing really strong one-to-one -one connections with people rather than just someone talking to you from a microphone. It's a lot more intimate than that. Okay, great. And Annabelle, did you want to talk about how to book? Sure. I'll just actually talk a little bit more about the collective. I mentioned in the introduction that we've got 18 uh, members across Australia. So as far as the pricing go, they actually vary from attraction to attraction. And we have some that are around about the $120 mark. And that might be a roof climb at Adelaide Oval. But all of them are bespoke experiences that can be done in small groups. Um, but we do uh, go up in price uh, with some experiences being around $500 per person, some, as Bronwyn has just said, around about $4,000 per, per person. And our most expensive and extravagant is $50,000 per person. So we really wow. cover the whole range. And I guess the great thing is that they are bookable experiences. Uh, so a, you can actually get information on our website in regards to how to book, but you can also uh, liaise directly with whoever you normally book your Australian um, travel experiences with. And if they're not available through them, please just um, get in touch and we can definitely make that happen. Brilliant, thank you. Um, and Bronwyn, one thing I was wondering, um, if an agent was to was to build in a visit to Queensland Art Gallery into their client's itinerary, how long would you recommend they suggest a, a visitor spends in the gallery? How long would it take to get around and see everything? Really depends on the person, but I will make an estimate for you. Okay. Um, in terms of our experiences that we have, our Indigenous experience, they're kind of obviously set times. Um, one's from 5.30 to about 8.30 and the other one is 6 from 10, 6 to 10 in the evening. They're the exclusive experiences. But if I was coming to um, the Queensland Art Gallery and Gallery of Modern Art, so we're um, two sites on the beautiful Brisbane River, but one institution, um, I know from our market research, the average is around one hour and 18 minutes. Oh, wow. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> yes, it is very specific. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Thank you. Okay, well, I think that is just about all we've got time for today. That seems to have gone very quickly. Um, but thank you, Annabelle and Bronwyn, for joining um, and answering everyone's questions. It's been really valuable. Thanks, well, thank Maddie. Thank you, everyone, thank for you. joining. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>